one and start okay welcome to the ultimate trickster guide basically this is a much maligned location that has been getting a lot of flack and i just wanted to show you guys how you get as trickster so let's go over the basics um you get a sensor your attack does almost no damage but what it does do it does apply knockback a bit and it does apply aggro so just pressing the x button that gives you some aggro and the y button summons your what is it called again i forgot what it well it's your instant it's your essence incense clone um some lacrum that's what they call it this will take aggro for you so while you're drawing aggro to yourself as long as this is up all aggro directed towards you will be directed towards this instead so that's a good part this is one of your bread and butters now if you hold this left bumper it'll roll with you and it'll also heal if you have the right core skills so make sure you get all your core skills you should unlock them all by level four which if you've been leveling warfare up to max which you need to anyway then you should have this uh at level four as soon as you're ready to play it now if you hold this left bumper and then press the y button you're going to do this kind of grab animation what that grab animation is is a possession um if you use the skill for it and you miss then it's bad for you because your uh sound lacrum goes away and if your sound lacrum goes away then all the enemies zero in on you but if you do not use the skill then obviously the sound lacrum stays with you you just miss it's just shorter range that way um now you've got a couple skills that are actually good and a couple skills that most of your skills aren't uh suffocating shroud this is your aggro skill but it's in a big circle around you it goes up and down a bit too aromatic resurgence is the most important skill it basically buffs your pawns. Actually, I should have waited until I saw the pawn status before we did that. Um, we're just gonna let that rock though. It's gonna wear off eventually. The base version of it wears off after 20 seconds. I haven't counted down the seconds for this one yet, but it lasts longer than the base version. Um, loose divider. Basically puts up a wall. Your enemies cannot see through it. They also uh, can't walk through it quickly. So it takes some time to get through it. During that time, you can take your time to either be buffing your pawns or possessing the enemies trying to rock through it, however you want to do things. What I like to do is put up two walls like this, put your sign lacrum behind it. The enemies already know sign lacrum's there. And then you just get the work wailing on them and doing what you gotta do. All right, let's see how long this aromatic resurgence lasts. Mississippi three, Mississippi four, Mississippi five, Mississippi six, Mississippi seven, Mississippi eight, Mississippi nine, Mississippi. 10, 11 Mississippi, 12 Mississippi, 13 Mississippi, 14 Mississippi, 18 Mississippi, 19 Mississippi, 20 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 Mississippi, Supposedly, you could stun a Drake out of using Meteoron. I have yet to see any evidence of that. I've tried it multiple times. Uh, the problem is the cast is so quick for Meteoron, and the cast is so long for this, and that you really, you barely have time to start. Like, if you want to try to get that done, it would help if you were able to partially freeze the enemy or something. You know what I'm saying? Um, slow them down with the Frostbite. So, with that, let me just go over my notes to make sure I'm hitting all the points that are important. Mayhap you will think this a trifle, but one master I served was quite the carefree soul, shunning armor in all its forms. Yeah. Now that's so, thought. If, if you like being a main DPS provider, this is not the vocation for you. That's first and foremost. This is not your vocation if you want to be DPS. Um, you cannot do DPS with this vocation. The only way I can think of to actually deal damage with this vocation directly is by throwing a dead enemy or an object at an enemy. Otherwise, well, I guess you can drop people off cliffs, but that's really annoying because you have to go get the items. So, or if it's in the brine, then you're not getting the items either. So, um, yeah. Your pawns matter a lot. Um, if you're good at this vocation, you'll slay most foes just as quickly as any other vocation and at far lower risk, all right? I cannot tell you how much safer I feel playing this than basically anything else because as long as you're playing your sound lacking right, you're good. Um, other core mechanics that really do matter. 
magic. Your magic level matters. So that's why you'll see I have this whimsical daydream. It's upgraded three times at the elven spot over here in Sacred Arbor. That's because it gives you higher magic if you upgrade it with the elves. So um, higher magic means more health for your simulacrum, which means it's less likely to die so quickly. Uh, so your weapon choice means the most with this particular location. Your strength affects your aggro. Um, again, you have other ways to work around that. You have vocations for that. Excuse me, not vocations. Augments for that, as well as rings you can wear. Uh, as I have a knockdown ring that prevents me from getting staggered because your your simulacrum automatically disappears if you get staggered at all. So if you get staggered, your simulacrum is going away. So as much as possible, your armor should be upgraded with the dwarves, not the elves. The dwarves. And that will increase your knockdown resistance. Uh, the other one I have is this favor. Uh, it's part of my aggro control, so I don't have to use this skill too often. Where I find myself using this skill the most is against harpies. Uh, that type of deal. Or if you're in the middle of a group and it looks like they're not paying enough good attention to you, you can go, go ahead and do that. But usually you don't have to use it except in a group or against harpies. Aramac Resurgence is the one skill you absolutely must use all the time. And I forgot to look again. Actually, let's let that run out, but I want to see what their current... Right now, 661, 524. I don't know if it's like the previous game where you can see buffs. If you can, that'd be awesome. Anyway. Um, and 1v1, especially against most bosses, you want to be playing aggressive Matador. By that, I mean I'm, putting, I'm setting up my guy here. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to wave, I'm going to smack him. He's going to be going for this, and as soon as he, the boss is about to hit it, warp it over here. Just hit the left bumper. Boom. And then you just keep going back and forth, just moving it out of the way. Uh, you can get really, really, you can basically knock down almost every boss 1v1 just using that combo. The big deals are going to be things that have the ability to aggro all your pawns at the same time. Like, um... Drake can do it, Chimera can do it, and um, Lish can do it. Not White, Lish. Actually, I think Lish can, Whites can summon a lot of things too. But those are going to be your main deals of like, okay, this is not something I can just play Matador against. I have to do something different. Items. Oh, I want to check the status. Nah, you can't see the buff. So you don't, we can't tell how much it buffs. But I can tell you it's a sizable buff because I went from being not able to kill a drake to being able to kill a drake maybe 50% of the time um, before it escaped by buffing um, with aromatic resurgence. Um, that's the biggest downside. If I would say this class has any real con, it's enemies that want to escape, especially drakes. If a drake wants to escape, you're going to have a hard time keeping it there. Your best bet is to climb on it when it gets down to like three bars of health left and just hope that your pawns get the memo to finish the job because you have no real means of doing it yourself. Um, but what does happen is, say she's casting um, the big meteor spell, Meteoron, right? And I've hit her with Paranat Resurgence. It's going to, it feels like it doubles that damage. I don't, I don't know if that's true. That's the true scaling of it, but it feels like that damage is out through the roof. So every, all the damage that your pawns is doing is really through the roof, and it shortens the amount of time that Drake potentially has to escape. Like I said, I went from not being able to beat the Drake at all to being able to take the Drake down maybe half the time. Um, and when I say I couldn't beat the Drake, yeah, I could stay alive, but it would always escape because it had enough time to escape, whereas we were getting consistently fast enough to kill it. So that's the one skill you absolutely must have. If you're going to play Warfare with the Sensor, uh, Aramac Resurgence is the one skill you absolutely must have. All right, so groups. Most people think this would be a bad vocation in groups. It's the exact opposite. All you have to do is, again, stay aggressive. Find the first person in the group. It doesn't matter if it's the strongest member or what. Just find something in that group. Hit it with your grab. Grab with some lacrum, and then run away. The reason is, as soon as you, as soon as you grab something with your some lacrum, you hit it with that possession attack. Uh, that thing's going to try to attack you because it's no longer under the effect of your some lacrum. It, know that you are you so it's gunning for you so uh you need to run away from that specific enemy i suggest kiting it through the rest of the enemies because the rest of the enemies are going to be gunning for that enemy so basically that enemy is now your fourth party member and really you need to think of this as a management class 
This is a management vocation. You are not a fighter, you are managing the flow of battle. You grabbing an enemy and making them your ally in a way, that's part of that. Or making all the other enemies allies against that enemy, that's how you're playing. Um, you're gonna see a video later where I do that to a griffin. I stick by Simon Lacrim on a griffin in the middle of melee. And I get some bandits who would normally be gunning for me to gun for that griffin, and it just makes killing that griffin so much faster. Um, and in the meantime, my pawns are just doing whatever they want to do. They go kill the bandits, and then they focus down on the griffin at the end. All right. So, um, now, I uh, want to move on to, we talked about group fights. Everything you do needs to be aggressive. If you're trying to hang back, and you're trying to not get involved with the fight, you're going to see when I'm a very new player to this, I am doing just that. I'm not getting involved. There's such a thing as being too involved and ineffective. There's a such a thing as being uninvolved and ineffective. If you're being involved and you're not getting your sign lacking broken, you're doing it the right way. Uh, if you're completely uninvolved, then it's just going to be clunky. Uh, so if you're, again, if you're in a melee fight one-on-one, -on -one, you need to be playing Matador. And whenever your Simon Lacrim doesn't need to get moved or you're not buffing your pawns, you need to be wailing on the enemy with this to keep their aggro on you. You don't necessarily need to be using Stuff King Shroud all the time. Number one, it's only one enemy. You can you can just smack them with your sensor. Number two, that costs stamina and depending on the enemy, especially Drake, stamina might be a resource you have to play pay attention to. Uh, if you're in a group fight, you need to still be aggressive. Everything needs to be aggressive with you. Like just because you're not able to do damage doesn't mean you can. You need to be aggressive at all times. You absolutely need to be aggressive at all times, 100% of the time. Um, find an enemy in a group fight. Find an enemy, grab it, run around, kite it through the other enemies. Once you see that enemy is about to die, grab another enemy. Rinse and repeat. You need to be on the move at all times. You need to be like Steph Curry looking for his three-point shot, just running around screens all the time, looking for something to do. You see your uh, sorcerer is about to cast meter on. All right, I'm putting up a wall. So that way, if the ogre wants to try to jump, drop kick her real quick, it's not going to happen. There's a wall there. She's going to get that meter on off. You know, find something to do. Find a way to keep yourself gainfully employed. There's real estate for you somewhere on the battlefield. If you're not finding something to do, you're playing this class wrong. And you're, that's why you're having a bad result because you're doing things. If you're slow and you're ineffective, your results are going to be slow and ineffective. If you're playing this class effectively, you will be 100% as effective, if not more effective than any other class in this game. All right. <clears throat> so the three things you need to worry about the most, you do not need to worry about your skills. I said that, right? The only skill you really need is the aromatic resurgence. It's just like a mystic spear hand. This spear hand really doesn't need skills at all. It, it doesn't, except for the uh, counter attack, not counter attack, the uh, shield thing. It only needs one skill. Otherwise, it doesn't need skills at all. Same thing with the trickster. Trickster doesn't need skills except for the one to buff the bonds. Um, now, but you do need three other things. You need the right augments, you need the right gear, and you need the right pawns. So, max DPS and one healer. So, I suggest slash recommend. The By the way, you can cancel that. The world outside their wood. Perhaps therein lies the origin of their noble nature. It is clear they abhor conflict above all else. I should not like to see the serenity of their haven disturbed. All right, let's talk about skills first. So, no, let's talk about augments. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, provocation increases your chance of getting targeted by 100%. Absolutely necessary. This is between this and this. These are both coming for fighter. Uh, you you increase your defense because on the off chance that your simulacrum does get broken, again, remember, you have all the aggro on you. So all the enemies are suddenly going to start attacking you and you have no way to defend yourself. Uh, so if you don't want to die, actual playism and metal are going to be on your set. Um, provocation. Increases the likelihood of being targeted by foes. This is fighter level four. And again, you should have every class at level four before you even start this because you should have already maxed out warfare. Why should you have already maxed out warfare? For dynamism. Dynamism is pretty much an auto-include on every single build you will ever play. Um, so you should have warfare at level nine. If you have Warfare at level 9, you have every other class at level 4. So you shouldn't have to personally level Fighter. You shouldn't have to personally level uh, Mage. You have to put some levels into um, Sorcerer, like two of them, because you need to get Constancy, which is augmenting your knockdown resistance. Again, if you're not staggered, then your Simon Lacrim doesn't break. Therefore, you want Constancy. And it does increase your knockdown resistance by 15%. 
So on top of our rings, we also have this augment. Just the same thing here. On top of our rings, we also have this augment because we just want it to be a lot easier to keep our sound lacrim up. We want it to be a lot easier to keep aggro. Ascendancy, your pawns are your main offense, therefore you want your pawns to always have the most damage. There is, uh, this is a magic archer level eight. There is another uh, skill you get from magic archer, sustainment. You're not gonna use this because you should not at all, your pawns shouldn't be getting hit for the most part. Sometimes they'll get hit like against Drake, but still for the most part, they shouldn't be getting targeted, so they shouldn't be dying unless it's from Meteor on Strike. And even then, I've noticed that my pawns, because I'm drawing aggro for them for the most part, they don't usually die from Meteor on. Like sometimes, but not usually. So Ascendancy, uh, Magic Archer level 8, Kansi, that's Sorcerer level 6, then Dynamism is Warfare level 9. That basically, if you're very light, or excuse me, if you're light, it treats you like you're very light. If you're average, it treats you like you're light. Heavy is average, very heavy is heavy. So it's very nice to have for that movement speed. You have no movement text whatsoever. You don't have a levitation. You don't have a rush move, no type of movement text. So th having this is good. I do, I would say, again, I suggested this uh, vocation. Number one, because Dragon's Illusion is kind of trash. I suggest this be a vocation that you plug into uh, Warfare, especially. Once you have that aromatic resurgence, it can be really, real nice. Um, you can just straight up buff your pawns and then swap back to whatever you want to swap to. Just because this weapon can't do damage doesn't mean your other weapons can't do damage, right? So, uh, you could, let's say you downed a drake. You could go to Aramac Resurgence, buff your pawns, swap to a great sword, and use, uh, you can't use Arc with Warfare, but you can use Savage Lash or Anomaly Lash and get that damage off. Like, so, don't underestimate the ability. This, this, this could be great. Um, this is one of those locations that goes really well with Warfare. All right. Yeah, and of course, get all your core skills. Um, so, aside from having the right augments, gear. We're gonna talk about gear and where to get it. So, you should have all of your gear, almost. You know, you should actually have 100% of your gear before you can start playing this class. Whimsical Daydream you get from the Sphinx Quest. Uh, you should have the Sphinx Quest done as soon as you reach Pocket Hall, you can finish them. Um, just look up a guide for that, by the way. If you get it wrong, then you start missing stuff, or you can even fail the entire quest altogether. Whimsical Daydream is your absolute best sensor item before you get to uh, post-game after beating the dragon, yada yada. Um, so make sure you upgrade it. I recommend upgrading with uh, Elf, because Elf gives you more magic, and magic gives your sound lack and more health. However, if you want to upgrade for knockdown power in order to do more against drakes, I understand it. Um, especially if you're playing this as your main and you're not going to swap back in some warfare set, set type of situation. But I honestly, I recommend magic. Uh, I recommend magic. Uncanny eyes. Uh, you get this one. Southwest of Bakhmatal. Okay, so you're coming out Bible Tall Gate. You're going left down here, past the Dinner's Ruins, where you do the smithing quest for dwarves. You come down this route, and here's the tomb of Janua. Uh, dang, I forgot where you got there. There's something important that you get at the tomb of Janua, so go there as well and break the hidden wall behind the boss. Because there's a hidden wall in front of the boss and a hidden wall behind the boss. Break the second hidden wall as well. There's an item in there that you want. But um, northwest of this tomb, there's a little platform. Um, with some bandits on it. Kill all the bandits and in a chest on the top of this uh, inside this temple you're going to find the Uncanny Eyes. Uncanny Eyes is it's, it's, it's baller. I, I, I can't say enough about it. It's just baller. Eris Bofo Robe. Um, this one you get for completing the Maester Quest for Sorcerer's but not the spellbound one up here in uh, a homegirl's house. Eni's home, not hers. You go instead to the checkpoint rest town at Mirden's home, and I think that's her her uh, father, uh, Trisha's father. You have to dress up in um, 
the palace set, the one that you know you have to wear to be to look good for the palace and go to the uh, to masquerades. Same set, just walk into his home with that, and you complete his version of the quest. Give him all the uh, falsified tomes. Don't go ahead to go to this shop. Oh, where's that? I don't think you can see it because my rift stone is too cool. Oh no, no. Here, yeah, the new black cat, Ibrahim. Go ahead and um, make forgeries of all five of the books that he wants. And then turn those books into him. And then he'll uh, give you this Ares Morphin Robe as a reward. It's the best robe you'll get for a dragon as well. Jewel Woven Sandals, this is the only item I was not able to find. Instead, I bought it. And you buy it over at um, Agamemnon. Again, ooh, nowhere near Agamemnon. So you just go to the Volcanic Island Camp and the shop right there. She'll sell it to you. Now, if you max out Warfare, then you'll be starting this whole vocation off at level 4. And you should already have plenty of time and money to buy this uh, these sandals. And more so than any other set, I don't recommend going unupgraded. I did try going unupgraded. You just get staggered a lot more. and get, Because getting staggered is a massive threat to you and your party. Um, just go ahead and immediately upgrade these with Dwarving Smithing. Um, hopefully you guys know how to get Dwarven Smithing done. If you don't, um, the easiest way to explain it is you can do, honestly, you can do it two, one of two ways, or you can do both ways simultaneously. You can go to Bakatal, down here to the Bakker Smithy, not, uh, Arvin Smithy, but the one all the way back here in the corner. This girl named Sarah will have a quest for you, but you have to already gotten the quest to, uh, reforge the sword. It, okay, it's actually kind of complicated. Never mind. The easier way, the easier route, because it's going to change, it's going to finish up at the same time, is if you go to uh, Claudna's to do the magic archer quest, uh, you should meet her husband somewhere around here. He's going, his back's going to hurt. You give him three green wire shiz, and then you will escort him over to the volcanic camp. And then once you finish that, you unlock magic archer. And after you unlock magic archer, you come back here. And anytime you go to his house, he'll be able to do Jordan Smithing for you. Um, the only thing is, it's on Agamemnon, so it's way out of the way, right? Um, whereas Sarah, if you do her quest, you do all the quests leading up to it, she's literally like just like right there. But you do have to do a lot of quests to get there. I'm just, I'm not. You have to do, you have to get the quest from Vernworth um, inside the castle. So all the way over here. Like somewhere in the courtyard, this dude's just going to be like, hey, uh, here's a sword. Nobody's taking care of it. So can you restore it? And that's when you go to Sarah over in Bakhtatal and. The dwarf says, I can't fix it, but she says, okay, I'll try to fix it. And then you just go and you, you save her in Mountain Base Cave. And then when you go back, she's able to uh, basically do Jordan Smithing for you from there on forward. All right, now that I've explained Jordan Smithing and the guy that wasn't meant to be about Jordan Smithing, um, is there anything else I really need to go over when it comes to, yes, rings. Ring of Resolution is gotten by purchasing it from the merchant, traveling merchant Dudley. He's also the same merchant that you will need to go to in Spellbound to buy Foam and the Shield. So you can find him out here in the ruined area of Melv. Uh, if that quest is still active, if it isn't, uh, or he, and he's not there, you can also go to Vernworth, the Rex, uh, West Vernworth Oxcart Station. That one will, he will be hanging around there sometimes as well. You just have to go back and forth between these two spots, assuming he's not dead and in the uh, morgue over here in the noble sector. And I recommend it if you're playing warrior at all, or if you're playing sorcerer, you're probably gonna wanna end up getting this ring anyway. Um, the other ring, ring of disfavor. Uh, this one increases your aggro. Again, we want aggro, we want aggro as high as possible at all times. Um, Coral Snake's hideout. So you should pick up the Coral Snake mission around here actually. And then you'll have to chase them down to their hideout. And once you get to their hideout, you'll it's going to be a lot of fighting through there. Make sure to check all the secondary pathways and all that to make sure you pick up this ring. And you also at the end, you'll be able to pick up the uh, the daggers called uh, Frosted Edges, which are really stupidly strong for that point in the game. Um, yeah, that's about all I have for the basics. I am going to show you some combat. Oh, no, I, I lied. I'm not done with the basics. Pawns. Your pawns need to be absolutely purpose-driven. So, unfortunately, my personal pawn isn't really made for a trickster because she's a uh, she 
he's a thief by trade. You can, say, you can say I'll set her up just to be a very good thief. She can do good DPS because thieves are DPS incarnate as far as physical attacks go. But realistically, what you really want to be playing are two sorcerers. And you want to be running Meteor on, on both sorcerers. Maelstrom is a waste of time. Don't do it. Uh, sorry, I'm not dissing whoever's uh, Arisen or Pond this is. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm in the 60s. It's pretty hard to find Sorcerer Pond, so I'm just using whatever I can find. You want to be using Meteor on. Uh, Levin's probably fine. Um, the Blizzard thing, whatever that one. Hagel. You want to be using Hagel. Um, I don't even know if Levin's necessarily good. Because you have to think about uh, Golems as well. So you need three attacks that can kind of deal with golems. I'd almost say this Sayism. Um, well, the only one would the only one left would be uh, Frigger, because Frigger does damage to golems. <laughs> but I'm thinking about Drakes, and having that Blizzard would be better for Drakes. So you have to kind of balance what you're thinking about, specifically for Trickster, and this is kind of why you kind of need to build your own Sorcerer for Trickster. Um, you kind of need, and I'm going to say it this way, Meteoron, Hegel, Levin is fine, mm, not Maelstrom, Sayism. So you have two attacks out of your four that can uh, hurt golems here, and one of them will absolutely melt a golem. And then a pawn, um, I'll say this is actually a perfect pawn. This is roughly what you want to be doing. The only thing that I would do better is change High Empyrean for... Um, for Frigger. Um, Celestial Panayan is clutch against Drakes in multiple ways. So if you're trying to climb a Drake, there's one time where I wanted Drake right, specifically because of this move. Because I was running out of stamina, I was climbing a Drake, and my pawn cast this, and all of a sudden my stamina was 100% consumed, uh, well resumed. And it was like, oh shoot. And then the Drake eventually gives up, falls back down, and my pawn's finished killing. So, huge move. Uh, other thing is, Drake's like to do a screen that saps all of your stamina. So if you don't carry around with stamina uh, Roborants all the time, which I don't because that's extra weight, then having this is clutch. Hi, Halidome. There's zero reason why you should not have this on your... I'm surprised by how many mages I run into that don't have High Halidome. I really am. Like, it's it disturbs me. Arden Circur, um... Yeah, I like it specifically because it um, on this class if your guy breaks your Sunblackum breaks then you absolutely do need that instant heal to be coming in hot because you're going, going to be taking all the aggro from if you're in a mob it can be like a whole bunch of rock rattlers just instantly on you just stabbing you up you're not going anywhere you're just stuck getting stun locked to death so having that heal come out of nowhere and be like okay I'm back like yeah that's good so this is actually a perfect mage except for this. I would go for a change of High Empyrean here. Uh, excuse me, uh, High Frigger here. And that's specifically to give it away to damage golems and uh, more damage against Drakes. Um, as far as my pawn goes, I think this is as good as I can go. Formless Faint's a waste of stamina though because again, my pawn shouldn't be getting hit so I could replace that with something else. Um, damage or just remove it so that my pawn doesn't waste stamina doing things that aren't effective. But yeah. We've covered all the items, where to find them, we've covered pawns. Is there anything else I need to cover? We've covered gear, aggro, DPS, sorcerers. Yeah, we covered everything. So yeah, following this you want to see some videos. It's going to be group fights, one-on-one -on -one fights, boss fights. I'm going to throw a Drake kill in there. So I hope you've enjoyed this guide. And yeah, Enjoy the rest. Peace. Now, I remember, I haven't upgraded any of my gear. It is the best stuff I can find. Just playing the game casually. Oh. Oh.
We mustn't allow ourselves to become seems super, seems super easy. Why are people complaining? This is super easy. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're basically hiding in the enemies. Oh yeah, and yeah, magic is definitely the way to go. Without question, without question, magic's the way to go. Put it out, ping them in immediately. Get your stuff turned on for magic. Should have done that from the beginning. Well, I'm going to set up a wall for my sound like behind it so that the Drake has to walk around. There being a treasure chest in this area when I explored it in other worlds. Alright, so you can't do it. I think it's this. There we go. Drink kill. Done. Done's over. Done's over. Got her. Done. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Ending off on an amazing note. 20 Worms Life Crystals. I think that's what we're not gonna hold. You know what? Trickster earned it. We're gonna go ahead and give it its uh, Dragon Force weapon. That was a... So, what was the big difference? I think I just used a lot more Aromatic Resurgence there. Uh, no Drake. What's going on here? Everybody, including the enemies. <laughs> Attack the Griffin. Because my effigy is on it.
As a matter of fact, every master I've ever served has favored different tactics. One party I joined consisted only of ranged specialists. Now there's a thought. It is a glad thing we invested with. You must not have done it I did not find it right there. It's actually pretty annoying. Remember, he's gonna run after me when you put the sound black on him. I put the sound black on him. So I need to kind of kite him towards other enemies, of course. Alright, now my cyber lack room is gonna be on you. This way, this way. Oof. You think I have such a high uh, resistance to that? Oh, I never thought about it. If I wanna do damage, I can throw dead enemies at enemies. I could probably do halfway decent damage. I feel the same way. I feel the same exact way as you do. But still, you want to be you want to be aggressive as possible. Right now, get you get you set up for success here. Get away from me. I know what you want. I don't. Yeah, this this location is fine with groups. I feel more competent with groups with this vocation than with sorcerer or warrior, you know, some of the stuff that's really good at group battle. 